This is Phil with Android Central, and this is the new Nexus Player. Okay, so here we go. This is the Nexus Player. Think of it as the full-fledged version of Android TV, which it is. It's got glossy sides and a matte top, and the bottom is this kind of soft-touch rubber. See the Asus logo there, and a little button. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, three ports here. That one's for the power. It's got a wall wart, and you've got micro USB for a little hackery if you want, and HDMI for running into your TV. The button is actually for pairing accessories, which you can also do through the menu if you want. Now, size-wise, you can see here how much bigger it is than a Chromecast, but it also does a lot more than a Chromecast, right? It's got a full quad-core Intel Atom processor inside, its own GPU, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of storage. So this is a full Android TV player, not just a little HDMI dongle. Here's what else is in the box. You have this big giant wall wart with a nice long cable, and you also have this little remote control that has a microphone in it for voice search. Those two come in the box. What doesn't come in the box is this optional gaming controller. Pretty standard fare here. It's a Bluetooth device. If you have one of your own, you can bring it. This one from Asus is pretty nice. It's also $40. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. Uh, also in the box here, you have this little card that helps you figure out what to do, but really it's that simple. You plug it into the wall, plug it into the TV, and you're good to go. And then you have the remote set up, which takes about two seconds. So let's actually walk through the setup here. I know it's a little dark. That'll get better in a second. So first thing you have to do is set up Wi-Fi. There is no Ethernet on this device. You will actually see it in the settings, but there is no Ethernet that's left over from the developer models, I guess. So you can use the remote control to put in your uh, Wi-Fi password if you want. But here's what I really recommend you do. Go get the remote control app, the Android TV remote app from uh, Google Play. And it's so much easier to type words right there. That easy. So once you're all connected, you're going to connect, right? You can do this on your own. I don't think you need my help for that part. Now, it's time to sign into Google. Couple ways to do that. One is to just use your username and password like normal, right? But here's what I recommend. Use your phone or laptop. I choose that setting because what you will do is get a pin here. And then you go to that website, g.co slash Android TV. You enter that pin into the website. And then your Nexus player says, all right, cool. I know who you are. I trust you. We're going to hook up now. And it's really just that simple. And after all that, you're connected. Uh, you got to just click through a couple more things here. Success! We are ready to go and use our Nexus player. You have terms of service and privacy policy and all of that, so it's not hidden. You can go read them if you want. Read them or not, whatever. So click on through to continue. You will be asked if you want to give it your location. I generally do just because. And now we're okay. Setup is complete. Enjoy, and it's time to go play with the Nexus player. All right, you ready for this? Here we go. Let's dive on into this thing. So here is kind of the main home screen, the main menu, if you will. You've got a big search box up top. You've got a bunch of recent things that you've watched or recommendations up here. And on down below, we start moving through the category. So you have apps. This includes movies and TVs, YouTube, Google Play Store, Google Play Music, Netflix, games, songs, uh, uh, you know, as you add apps, they will show up here, like PBS Kids, which I added. Same thing for games. This comes with Badland pre-installed, but you can install other games at your will. You have some settings. We'll look at those in a minute, and some you know typical Wi-Fi stuff. So first, let's take a look at Google Play, because you're going to spend a lot of time here. I love this interface. I love the way it looks. It's very lean back, uh, very easy to find your way around. You can surf through the categories, either zoomed in like this or on the left, and as you go through them, you just... Decide what you want to install and install it. So here's Soulcraft 2. Uh, very reminiscent of what you get in Google Play in the web version. The exact same content, right? You get the same description, same bullet points, all that stuff that you would normally find in an app install in Google Play, whether it's on a phone or on the web, I guess. Uh, so that's the full description. You have to click through to see that, right? Oh, so many games here. Look at that Double Dragon trilogy. I love that. All right, well, tell you what, let's take a deeper look. Two ninety nine. This is a paid app. Free apps. You just click install and it installs. A paid app's a little different. Uh, by the way, note that you do have full listing of all of the permissions that an app declares. If you like it, just hit accept. Now we're gonna buy it. Before we do that, do mind your uh, payment options because I actually have a, a company credit card as my main credit card on there. So I need to go down there and you can choose Google Play Balance or your Google Wallet Balance first. But I'm going to choose a different credit card and that's how you do that. And now let's just buy it. You do need to uh, enter your password here, or at least you do if you have it protected. I do. 
So again, you can use the remote to do it, but it's kind of a pain. What I really recommend is that you use your phone and pop up the keyboard on your phone or tablet, and it's so much easier to type that way. No, that is not my real password. So once you do that, uh, you see it starts to install there. And again, it's like installing an Android app. Pretty simple. You'll you know get the hang of it very quickly. I just want to point this out in case you have kids that are going to be using this. You can leave the password set on purchasing items, so your kids can't buy things whenever they want. You can have it set to never every 30 minutes, so you only have to enter it once every 30 minutes, or you can have it set so that you have to enter your password for anything you're going to buy. That'll really keep your kids from spending your money. So uh, again, you also have this on phones. Um, there's content filtering, so if you don't want you know your kids to see everything, you can change that. Again, very much, it's exactly like the Play Store, actually. So now let's take a look at Google Play Music. Um, this one is probably most like what we're used to on phones, tablets, and the web. I would expect this to get an update at some point. Um, what we have right now today, pre-launch, does not have the Songza integration, but, you know, my library is there, the recommendations are there, playlists are there, you can, you know, fly through artists, you have big pictures, it looks really, really nice. Just the only thing that's missing is the Songza integration right now. So, again, this is all going to change over time, too, so don't sweat it too much. Uh, I don't really have any playlists, there's your radio and explore, you know, featured recommended new releases, which is where I spend a whole lot of time generally. And you can just flip through and listen to music if you have all access. You can listen to everything just like you normally would. So very cool. Very nicely done. But again, missing songs, and I would expect it to get an update. You can use search here as well. You can use search everywhere, right? If you've used search, you know how it works. Uh, let's say I want to look for, I don't know, Led Zeppelin. So you say Led Zeppelin into your phone, and it's going to search for anything and everything Led Zeppelin. If you have all access, it'll look everywhere. If it's just in your library, it'll just show what's in your library. Again, Nothing we haven't seen before, but it's very nicely done on the TV. It really looks so good. Let's take a quick look at YouTube. This is another one. It's just beautiful on here. I love this UI. I love the integration. Uh, right now, I'm signed in with my account, and you have all the usual things that you would find on YouTube on the web. You have all your subscriptions. We'll just fly through those because I got a bunch. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Recognize any faces there? Yes, no? You can browse channels too, so you get a whole bunch of recommended content because YouTube is all about you watching more YouTube. Do it. And you also have some YouTube settings, so safe search filtering. You can sign in and out as different accounts if you want. <laughs> Watch this because we have so many things tied to my account. Um, you know, you can sign in as, as other pages or whatever. So I'll just sign back in as me here. And you can clear your history if you're watching things you don't want other people to know you watch. So that's YouTube. Really, really looks nice here on the Nexus Player. I love this lean back experience. Uh, let's go into movies and TVs now because you'll probably be spending a lot of your time there as well. So here's something I just happen to have watching. I was watching Frozen. Don't judge. It's a good movie. Uh, so you're not actually going to be able to see it here, but trust me, it's playing. It's Frozen. So you can get information as you're watching it. Actually, I paused it there just because you get related movies. Oh, the Lego movie. i got to watch that again soon. Mr. Peabody, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Very good stuff. Um, my movies. So anything that's already in your library that you've bought or whatever, that's how you get to it. Again, you've probably seen something similar like this if you've been using Chromecast. It's very familiar. A really, really good UI. Again, more related items. You can watch trailers if you want. My TV shows, any TV shows you've bought or whatever will be in there. And then you have all the other things you can buy. New releases recommended for you. Halloween Family Fun. Jump Street's back. Just so many categories. So much content that you can go through here. You could spend all day flipping through this. And I kind of already have for the purpose is for science really not just because i'm having fun again there are all the categories on the left if you get lost you can just zoom back out and it's right there very nicely done looks really really good um how about google play games i don't really go into this too much just in my daily use but you'll see it's going to load up my profile here and show games that i play and achievements that i've reached it's going to show people who are in my circles uh you know there's skyforce 2014 however do note, not available for this device. So you will see versions of apps that are not for Android TV listed in here. But if we go back and find I don't know, Asphalt, you can see I've been playing Asphalt on here, and you can see things I've done. Hooray for me. 
I'm not very good at it, as you can tell. <laughs> but you can see leaderboards and, you know, play against your friends and stuff. Uh, you will see other people who you have circled on Google+. Plus. So there's Era, there's our pal Dan Bader. You can find other games. And if you have any messages in your inbox, nobody likes me, then you would, you know, have messages. Uh, let's go back to the players for a second. There's our pal Dan from Mobile Syrup. And uh, you can look and see how they are doing in the games they are playing. Dan is a rookie. You see, I'm winning head-to-head because that's me. Go me. And finally, let's take a quick tour through the main settings on this, the Nexus player. So network settings, Google Cast, whatever. I mean, this is all stuff you will recognize from phones and tablets. It just looks different. Uh, it is worth noting Daydream is on here, and that's what they use to send the backdrop over. So after five minutes by default, you will get to see the beautiful Chromecast backdrop pictures that you've come to know and love. Very cool, and you can change the time on that to whatever you want. Uh, storage and reset. So this is where you'll see how much storage you have left. It's a six gigabyte device, and if you click through, you can see exactly what's using what. And as we scroll down, you'll see I've only got about two and a half gigs left, actually. So it's very conceivable you'll run out of space at some point. Uh, and you also have the about screen, system update, blah, 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 all the stuff you're used to. And yes, there's the build number. Click on it seven times, and you will get developer options. Uh, same developer options you're used to in Android. Date, time, speech, search, accessibility, all that stuff. Dev options, remotes and accessories. So that's what you can see what's connected. Again, you can either hit the button or do it here. Location, security restrictions. We'll click into this. Unknown sources so you can sideload. That should be fun. And that's about it. So there's your very quick look at the brand new Nexus player from Google. Really, really nice. A lot to like. And we've got a lot more coming on this guy. That's it. We'll see you.